video will walk us through the process of filtering an actual water sample for the Florida Microplastic Awareness Project. Our first step is we need to insert a piece of filter paper into our filter funnel. And as is always the case with these, we want to make sure that we remove the thin piece of paper that is overlying our piece of filter paper. And we're going to discard that thin piece of paper, take our filter paper with the grid lines, place it on the base of the filter flask, filter funnel holder, so that the grid lines are facing up. When we're ready to actually filter a sample, the first thing we need to do is triple rinse the top part of our filter holder. We need to use our previously filtered water to do that. This can be seawater or tap water, doesn't really matter as long as it's been run through that 0.45 micron filter. And we want to rinse the entire inside, trying to make sure that the water runs completely down the sides of the filter holder. And we want to make sure that we've rinsed it three times. we want to try and prevent any contamination of the filter by fibers that might be in the air. So we're going to use a petri dish lid to cover the flask as much as possible uh, during the whole rest of this filtration process. You want to leave a slight air gap, otherwise the flask will become va vacuum sealed to the filter holder and you actually won't be able to conduct your filtration. Uh, but you do want to cover as much as possible with that petri dish lid. So we're going to take our sample, we're going to fill our filter paper holder, place the petri dish on, and we want to make sure that we immediately also put the lid back on our sample, again trying to prevent any contamination. We'll attach our vacuum pump and apply vacuum. It's always a good idea to hold on to that Erlenmeyer flask, keep it steady, prevent it from tipping and spilling your sample. As you're filtering your sample, it's important to keep an eye on the water level in your Erlenmeyer flask. If your bottle, your sample bottle was really full, there is a possibility that you could have enough volume in here that you would actually suck water through the sidearm and into your vacuum pump. You don't want that to happen. So it's a good idea before you put your final amount of sample into your flask, just go ahead and dump what's in the flask. You can just loosen the filter holder. discard that water, and then put the filter holder back on before doing your final third of your sample. Once you've completely filtered your sample, you need to take the filter paper and place it in a petri dish. So we carefully, using the tongs, grab the filter paper by the edge lift it into the base of a petri dish and cover the petri dish with the lid. Our sample is now ready to observe. In order to identify the filter and the sample that it came from, use a small piece of paper. I'm using waterproof paper. I'm going to write the sample bottle number on it and I'm also going to put the date that the sample was collected. This way, if the filters are sitting around for a while, I can keep track of which sample came from when. That little piece of waterproof paper can simply go in the petri dish with the piece of filter paper.